sorry. Hello. Hello. Oh, you are. I'm just making a thumbnail. Do you want to be in the thumbnail? Sure. <laughs> You're the best. You're the best. <laughs> So we are starting on the white aisle and right away I spot two pieces of, I think this is Westmoreland, not exactly sure. So I always think this is like a sea serpent. Some people call it a dolphin or a dragon. And this is the middle compote dish maybe. So I snag this right away, super happy to find this. But the problem is I don't have the other candlestick. So I'm gonna be on the hunt for that. And in my cart it goes after checking that it has no chips or cracks or imperfections. All right, let's keep going and see what else we can find. White is one of the hardest aisles for me to identify pieces. This, the clear aisle and the black aisle. For some reason, the other color aisles are much easier for me to spot things. Here I'm looking at a reticulated dish or a pierced dish. I think that's what that's called, but I leave that one behind. Now maybe that was a mistake. Maybe I should have picked that one up. I'm trying to be super careful lately because I have less time to list because of making videos. With working this much, I really have to divide my time as carefully as I can. I'm spotting these champagne flutes, kind of a modern style, but right away my eye captures this Disney figurine. I think a lot of people use this for their wedding cakes. And again, checking for chips and cracks, I couldn't believe that this one was in good condition. $9.99, carefully putting them in my cart. You guys stay in there. <laughs> Maybe they're dancing in my cart. I really liked the pattern on this. This was Melamine or Melamac Melamine. I like picking up Melamine, Melamac, different types of plastic dishes for all of the outdoor entertaining everybody does, and plus it's so much easier to ship. But I don't know how many people would want that pattern. Now I should have run a comp on that, but I did not. So if anybody's looking for that, this is Goodwill 30 in Lancaster. Lots of little bowls. What else, what else can we spot? These canisters were interesting. I guess that says flour and sugar, $4.99. Contemporary, and I wasn't sure if the chipping was on purpose, if it was a you know purposeful chipping. So I leave those behind. At the end of the aisle, I spot two little salt and pepper shakers in the shape of birds. I don't think those would bring more than four or five dollars. And then my eye spots the rim of this plate because the color is so beautiful, I think it just popped out. This thing is gorgeous. Now it's really more of a platter because of the size. And do I wanna ship this? No, I don't, but how could you turn this down? So this is the back and I did look up that pottery name. These can bring very good money. So very carefully going in my cart. I really love the colorway on that one. And I figured I would just discipline myself and do the black aisle next. Sometimes I just gravitate towards the aisles that I love, the brown, the green. Here's some boar's head cups, tumblers, travel mugs. I forgot to comp these. A lot of people do love boar's head, cold cuts and meats, cheeses. And I am one of those people, although I'm not really eating too many cold cuts these days. When you're in your 60s, it feels like you have to watch everything you eat, it's crazy. And now my eye spots this zither. I'm pretty sure this is a zither. Definitely vintage, if not antique. $14.99, which I felt was a fair price, but I'm noticing quite a bit of damage on the back. Now this one was made in Germany, and you can see that it's splitting where the wood was originally joined. I don't know if that affects the sound of the music. I would imagine it does but I'm gonna run comps on it to see if I can find any other ones like this that also have damage. So I do put this in my cart for a while. Items like this are just beautiful and they definitely deserve to be saved, 
I don't know if I would try to sell it just for decorative purposes. Just a little poster book, Magic Eye, but I leave that behind. Darth Vader mask. And then how could I have missed this? I'm not quite sure. This is a huge, I'm thinking this is a coffee urn, $14.99. Very tricky to get this off the top shelf with one hand while I'm holding the camera in the other, but it wasn't too bad. And then I noticed that the top is missing. Bummer. So I am gonna hold on to this for a while in case the top is on another shelf or it comes out with a new cart. There is the marking on the bottom. Kind of showed that too quickly and I'm trying to balance it in the cart and not break anything else. I will try to insert photos here of what the marking is. And I am checking it for damage as I go along. And I notice that it is signed Dubois. How cool is that? I think there's a famous old movie with Dubois as the last name. And now this wreath catches my eye. I've been looking for a spring wreath. Kind of sorry I didn't pick that up, but it was a little small for my door. Lots of word signs. And then my eye catches two pole pocket West Elm drapes or curtains. These are blackout. This is the find of the day. Now they are $9.99 each, but today is Senior Citizens Day, 15% off. So what is that, $7.50? Something like that. $8.50. And I thought that was a great price. Now one has the correct sizing and the other one does not. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do about that. I think I'm going to weigh them. If they weigh the same amount of ounces, that would tell me they're the same size. That's a trick I learned a while ago. When you have two items and one is marked, you know, size-wise and the other one is not. Cross-weave curtains. Yes, please. Now we're starting down the brown aisle. This little vintage stool looked like it had quite the repair. I think that's called a milking stool. I'm not sure what size constitutes a milking stool, but in my mind, that's what it should be. And as you can see, I've thrown a little bit of clothing in the cart. I turned the corner and found a beautiful orange linen men's shirt. So in the cart that went. Another find of the day, vintage or antique binoculars. When I see this kind of wear or damage to a case, you can tell this is genuine age. I don't think you can fake this. <laughs> I almost banged those. I have to be really careful with one hand. So here you can see it says US Army with a lot of numbers, makes it very easy to research. You're just plugging those numbers into a Google search or an eBay search. And here I'm showing the leather case and the name. That is the company that made binoculars for the military during this time period. I'm not exactly sure of this one. This has got to be World War II, I'm thinking. So you can see quite a bit of wear just normal usage and storage wear. And I don't know that it matters that they work correctly. Now, you don't want the lenses to be cracked, you know, the eyepieces, but I don't know that it has to be super clear. I don't think anybody's really using that for bird watching. I think that's more for a collection. Okay, this piece is beautiful. This is a top to a coffee table and people make trays out of these. So I don't have time to do something like that, but a piece of wood is cut in an oval shape and inserted and it becomes a tray. This copper piece is interesting, definitely contemporary. This is made to look old, so it's made in China, and it is just sprayed with a wetting agent to create this fake patina rust, or sometimes they're even painted with a rust colored paint. I liked this tall tin letter holder. For some reason, I didn't gravitate towards picking it up. And unfortunately, like most other elephant figurines and statues in the thrift store, he is missing pieces. His tusks have been robbed. I think they've just been broken. So dramatic. Little baggies of items always capture my attention, and I do appreciate when Goodwill does this. As long as we can see what's in there and we can really tell the condition of the item, 
This is just four little prep wooden bowls with so many more people cooking these days. I think people look for this type of thing. I'm not sure that'll bring a very high dollar amount, but definitely worth picking up. Lots of decorative tins and boxes. This one has damage, a cigar box. Again, I'm not picking up as many cigar boxes as I used to, but my eye is still drawn to them. A little glass photo frame. Something about this I very much liked. Again, I don't think the frame was true copper. I mean, it could be with just a burnished paint over it. But for $1.99, I definitely put this in my cart. So as you can see, we're only in the door for a little while and I can tell it's gonna be a great day. And we are onto the beigey yellow gold dial. Little plastic radio. Now I have no plan of picking up these cups, but I wonder how they got that color on. I didn't know if the glass was made with this iridescent, beautiful gold color, and I noticed that one is lighter. Cannot figure that out, total conundrum. I love, 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 triple love this candlestick. Brutalist style. If you don't know what Brutalist is, you want to look that up. And I was hoping for a second, which sadly I did not find. Candlesticks like that, maybe it's a mistake on my part not to pick up a single, but I did not find the second one, so I wound up putting that back. Soap made in Hawaii. <laughs> yep, I had to do the sniff test. It did not smell like honey. Just a little cheap basket. Somebody actually left their Dunkin' Donuts coffee on the shelf. I don't know what people are thinking. I think that little plastic item that I picked up is to shape hamburger patties. Total guess. and dog food. Oh, there is so much food on these aisles. I'm very surprised that Goodwill is allowed to sell food items. You would think that's a lawsuit waiting to happen, but I don't know. I have seen quite a few of these wood brass, you know, to carry wood or logs holders. There it was showing it had like duck feet and I don't pick these up. I've never sold them, but I want to see these repurposed. I think there's probably a really good purpose for those. There's a little iron napkin holder. $7 was too high, or I would have picked that up for outdoor dining. Some Avon candles. Even though I don't sell Avon, I always want to see what's in the box. I am the nosiest person. I think that has helped me with my reselling career. I want to look at everything and know everything about everything. I've seen these votive shades or these light shades, I should say. I very much like that colorway and that design. First, I thought this was a bell, but I think it's a pomander. I think you put scented powder in there sachet and you uh, hang that in your closet. This little elephant is in one piece, but he's home co, so I leave him behind. The shelves are just filled with interesting items today. What? A blow dryer on a pedestal stand? That's crazy. So when I turned it over, I thought this was a prop or it was just something, but this is genuinely vintage, I think. K&M, and you can tell by the plug, when you look at an item and you're not sure if it's contemporary or it's truly vintage or antique, always look at the electrical plug. That plug will tell the whole story. So here I'm zooming in on the K&M, and I did run a comp on these. This is genuinely old. There's the top test to make sure it's metal and not plastic. And this non-polarized plug sticker was put on by Goodwill. I think now that's the law. They have to do that. Not positive about that. I do leave it in my cart and run a comp. 
So of course I have to bend down to the bottom shelf. See, I do look at the bottom shelves. An artist's brush. And then this picture, it was a print and had a little bit of damage. Not quite sure what kind of dog that is. Hunting dog. Here is a giraffe. This is just made for the souvenir trade, which sometimes I pick up these type of items. I felt like this one wasn't detailed enough, but I did want to take a look at it and bring him up to the top shelf in case somebody else wanted him. I thought it would be nice in a child's room, but he looked kind of mean. I think that giraffe needed to be smiling. A tiki mug. Somebody painted this. I do pick up a lot of items with tiki on it. Oh, that was mass marketed. My mistake. Turning the corner, I see a paperweight I've looked at three times now on separate trips. And I see these vases or urns, probably made in India. They were a little bit different. $5 a piece is high for that, and I don't know that many people would want those. And I found a bag of oranges. I love finding good fake fruit. I always say that. I can't give you brands necessarily, but when you look at the fruit, it looks very realistic. This one actually has like a few dented places like a real orange might have. $4. And I'm thinking I'm going to get probably $16 to $18 for these five oranges. I think oranges are less common than lemons or apples. So when I see a fruit that's not that common, like a papaya or something, I put it in my cart. Okay, more Hummel. The only reason I put this in my cart is because it said first edition 1975. I will run a comp on this and I'll insert screenshots. Many people think that everything Hummel is, you know, brings a good return. It does not. You really have to run comps on Hummels. Some pretty goblets, water glasses. I think those might be made in Mexico because of the chunky look to them. Another frog sitting on a shelf. Seems like every shopping trip, I spot the frog sitting on the shelf. That would be a fun game. Look for the frog. You can tell I've been thrifting way too much when you start to make up games in your mind. This hummingbird statue, see the overspray of the paint? No good. So we leave that one behind, but I have picked up hummingbird resin statues, not wood, but just regular resin mass produced before and have done well with them, but they have to be very finely painted. Some Alaskan art made in Canada, I think that said. Here I'm noticing how filthy my hands are. I figured I'd share that with you guys. Digging is hard work, thrifting is hard work, and I come home needing a shower some days. That's how dusty and dirty the stores are. All right, guys, thanks for all the support. Hit the like and subscribe button if you will. I appreciate it so much. And as always, go out and get what's yours.